on-the-scene video coverage of TCT 2012 is supported by Prodexa. Uh, thank you, Professor Moran. It's a great uh, privilege uh, to stand up here and give the uh, first presentation of the uh, Zimmer Investigators. Um, my uh, co-colleague, Professor Jose Maria de la Torre Hernandez, is also here with me in the press conference. Um, uh, the Zimmer trial is a play on words in English. Um, uh, a Zimmer frame is what's used for elderly patients to walk around. I think they're called walkers in America. But that's the purpose and name of this trial, and that's where it's come from. This is a prospective randomized trial of Everolimus eluting stents versus bare metal stents in octogenarian patients. And uh, it's called Zion's or Vision for the Management of Angina in the Elderly, which is where the Zimmer comes from. Uh, these are my disclosures over the last year. It's important to uh, emphasize this trial was funded by an unrestricted educational grant from Abbott Vascular. Healthcare has improved sufficiently that its uh, increasing proportion of elderly patients uh, uh, are now coming to the fore. Um, it's an increasing common clinical scenario to have an elderly patient with extensive comorbidity, refractory angina, complex coronary anatomy that is unsuitable for various reasons for coronary artery bypass surgery. Whether or not bare metal or drug eluting stents uh, are useful in coronary disease has been answered, mainly by the ARTS-1 and ARTS-2 trials. But one has to remember the mean age of these patients was 61 years. And is it appropriate to uh, extend the findings from these important trials to patients who are two, nearly three decades older? Octogenarians are often excluded from clinical trials for good reason. Um, and what does exist is scanty data on retrospective, single center, uh, small sample series with variable results. We intended in this uh, trial to uh, investigate the hypothesis that drug eluting stenting of coronary disease causing limiting angina will be superior to bare metal stenting in terms of a combined endpoint of mortality, MI, stroke, requirement for target vessel revascularization, and severe hemorrhage at one year in patients aged 80 or above. Drug eluting stent technology would seem an obvious use in patients who have complex coronary disease. But the other side of the coin is elderly patients will then be committed to one year dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, this may lead to bleeding, and if patients who are elderly bleed, the consequences of that bleeding are usually very significant. You may have thin stent restenosis in a bare metal stent, but it may well be that the clinical consequence of that may be sufficiently uh, unimportant for a patient who has limited physical um, capability. There were 22 centers across UK and Spain, and I'm grateful to Professor De La Torre Hernandez to make this uh, an international study. And um, uh, over two years, uh, the last enrolled patient was in August 2011. We managed to accumulate 800 patients, 400 from the UK and 400 from Spain. This is the bottom line um, uh, of the primary endpoint there was no different in death between the two groups. There was no different in major hemorrhage, despite the different dual antiplatelet therapy regimes that two groups uh, required. Myocardial infarction was increased in the bare metal group, as was target vessel revascularization, both of these proving significant p-values. And the incidence of stroke in the two groups was no different. The primary endpoint was 18.7% in the bare metal group and 14.5% in the drug eluting stent and the p-value was 0.092. This is represented on the Kaplan-Meier survival plots, a time to first event here, showing the uh, difference in the two uh, arms, mainly driven by MI and TVR. We can conclude that uh, this prospective randomized trial comparing bare metal and drug eluting stents for octogenarians requiring stenting for coronary disease has shown good clinical results with drug eluting and bare metal stents. No difference in mortality between the two groups at one year. Statistically similar rates of major hemorrhage in both groups despite differing DAPT regimes, but significantly lower rates of TVR and MI among the DES treated patients. Thanks very much. So this uh, paper is open for any questions from the press. Can a panel member ask a question? 
Yes, we'll come back, oh, okay. but we'll first give the right uh, to, the, to the floor. Please, uh, please introduce yourself and... Hi, I'm Michael Reardon with theheart.org. If you had to balance between sort of the risk of bleeding and you're also seeing a, an increase in the risk of MI, how do you put this sort of into uh, context for clinicians that may have an elderly patient? Like what would your recommendations be based on, based on these data? Well, it's uh, a common theme to have uh, the discussion that elderly patients are having bleeding events, but they've left hospital. They're usually uh, away from the center that put the stent in. And to be honest, there was very little data in understanding what the risk was, although there was a concern that it was a very significant risk uh, for this particular cohort of patients. What's reassuring is that uh, the severe hemorrhage rates uh, were a little low. I haven't shown you the sub-analysis, but it shows you that between six months and 12 months in the uh, drug-eluting stent group, uh, there was 1% uh, severe major hemorrhage, 0.2% in the bare metal group. Um, but overall, the severe he uh, major hemorrhage between the two groups wasn't as uh, significant as we thought it might be. And I think this is very useful data for patients, perhaps can be reassured from this, that if they do want to put drug eluting stent technology in elderly patients, that the consequence of this are not as significant as we thought it might be. Was, is the risk in MI that you're seeing in sort of the uh, primary endpoint, um, is that concerning to you? Or how does that balance out against sort of the reduction in bleeding versus you know, the, the increased risk of MI? Yeah, the bare metal group, um, I suppose uh, my thought initially that the, the instant restenosis that we saw in the bare metal group might be relatively silent clinically has actually translated into important myocardial infarction events. And so that's an important finding from this study in terms of decision making. Uh, Dr. Miller, sorry. We've got, well, I think she has, she's first. Yeah. You're fine. Okay. Uh, Ed Sussman from my PhD. If the target vessel revascularization, was that angiographically driven or symptom driven? This is clinically driven. Uh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't do uh, serial angiograms on these patients. Any other questions? Yes. Bert Cohen from angioplasty.org. Again, uh, I've asked this question all the time. Uh, definition of, of bleeding. It was, this was not access site bleeding. This yeah, was yeah. No, we used the TIMI. Uh, the Timmy, the, what I've presented is Timmy Major, okay. is as a definition of severe hemorrhage. So, just to follow up, what was the rate of Timmy Minor? Because while Timmy Major is uh, extremely important, but so is Timmy Minor, especially in the elderly. I haven't presented that data, but it's uh, three percent in the drug eluting stent group and two percent in the bare metal group. Okay, that's quite low. Okay, so let's come to the, uh, to, the, to the panel. Dr. Gray, you had a question? Dr. Silver. Yeah, Dr. Bella, very important study, of course, because elderly as an inclusion criteria. So the primary endpoint was not met. Correct. Okay, so what is your conclusion? Should, should, uh, should we prefer drug eluting stents in the elderly or not? I mean, the, the, the major uh, uh, driven, the major component of the primary endpoint was target vessel reutilization. And this was highly significant different and I can imagine for elderly people it's it's a pain to come back again on, on the cath table. So I would say yes, uh, in general, if there's no contraindication, you should go for drug eluting stand, even in patients over 75. Or what is your conclusion? I think we're reassured by this data that uh, the outcome actually for both groups was, was uh, pretty good. Some of the registry data uh, shows incidence of much greater events than these that uh, have been reported. Um, so whereas the primary endpoint wasn't met, the uh, analysis of the data shows that TVR and MI of the bare metal group is a clinically important endpoint that we should uh, decide. I'm reassured by this, these data that drug eluting stent technology will be of benefit to this age group. Congrat sure. Congratulations. This is a very important study, common problem we all face. Stent thrombosis rates um, between the two groups, do you uh, able to tease out that? We haven't been able to tease it out. The main problem is the difficulty in uh, the mortality patients. A lot of uh, the deaths were difficult to get uh, specific data from rural uh, Spanish sites. And 
the reason I haven't presented it is because we're working hard in trying to, uh, to, to nail that, but I'm not sufficiently comfortable with the data at the moment to, to say. It looks, uh, it looks like, certainly from the UK data, that it's low, but I can't give you a specific number at the moment. No? Uh, I think it's, a, I always love to see a, a, a trial that takes on excluded patients from other trials. And when you, you take on a group of confounding patients, and I think you give reasonably clear data. I think it's important, and especially as everybody said, this is a, a difficult population that we all deal with. So congratulations. Um, first, do you have data on dual antiplatelet therapy at you know three, six, twelve months? I think that's important to know as we're as one of the major components of the endpoint is hemorrhage. One of the major concerns was compliance in this uh, challenging group, and um, uh, whereas the compliance was excellent, uh, it turns out. That may well be because of monitoring uh, in association with the trial, and whether or not this can be related to uh, to the day-to-day -day clinical practice will have to be, be 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 borne out. But it does emphasise that if you if you are able to set up systems which can encourage good compliance, then you get good results. And it also bears on the on the hemorrhage in the trial. That is, if there was only 70% of the patients at six months actually taking dual antiplatelet therapy for, on the DES side. That will change your conclusions, obviously. Yeah. But I think, uh, just one last comment, I think that uh, this, op this, this is a broader issue because patients who, have, who are older tend to have multivessel disease, and so this opens up the door for them from a safety perspective, if nothing else. You know, the alternative would be bypass surgery, which in this population would be cre incredibly difficult. So this is a very important study, I think. Even though the endpoint wasn't met, I agree with Sigmund. I think you look at the time to event charts and you say that this is clearly, there's a differential here that's going on. And I, I, again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank congratulations. You. If there are no other questions, we'll move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much.